everybody. I'm Cassidy, one of your Indianapolis Colts cheerleaders, and you're watching the Believe in Colts podcast. Welcome back to Believe in Colts. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, are my guys Gerard Powers and Rodney McLeod. And today, we have a very serious episode that we're going to go over. Um, first off, I'll tell you what. Nobody wants to see anyone ever get injured on the field, right? No one wants to see injuries. Everybody, I mean, it, it's part of the game. It happens, but no one likes to see it. I mean, uh, this past Sunday, we saw a few injuries, including one to our very own, um, actually a couple. We had a concussion as well, right, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, but what happened last night to DeMar Hamlin? was to the point that it just brings us all back to the hu the humanity of, of, of the situation. Uh, Gerard, what was your uh, thoughts when you actually saw what was going on out there? Oh, uh, well, I was watching it live. And uh, I mean, as soon as it happened, mm -hmm. I, I mean, Rodney will tell you, like you see concussions so much, like guys mm -hmm. get woozy and all that. So you know how a guy would react if he gets up too fast and he's woozy and he might have to go back down. But as soon as I saw the way that he kind of collapsed down, I was like, man, I hope I hope his you know, heart didn't stop, man. That looked like a collapse. I mean, that's the first thing I said to my wife. And my wife is literally in panic mode. Like you, you would think that, it was one of her kids or myself in that situation because it just took her back to like being in the stands you know watching watching me injuries happen and all that and you just get worried as a you know a family member or a friend or whoever it might be that you're supporting watching that game so my entire household literally my kids come from their rooms downstairs like dad did you see just what happened like what's wrong what's wrong and all those type things and you know i'm trying to calm them down and just like hey man let's just pray uh, let's just hope for the best, hope that he's okay, and, uh, and and let the doctors do their job, let the trainers do their job. But when it became commercial break after commercial break, uh, he needs oxygen. He need like, when they started making, like, little statements like that, that's when I was like, oh, man, this is, like, really, really bad. Like, this 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 is a serious, serious situation. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's just scary. I mean, you talk – I mean, we hear the cliches all the time, you know, as football players, hey, I'll die on the field, hey, I'll – we're going to war, you know, stuff like that. But you, you literally expect to go back home to your family after every game, uh, and 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 you don't take it to that extent, literally. Uh, but to see something like like that happen, man, it just brings you back down. I mean, it, it grounds you again and lets you know uh, how serious and how rough this game can be. And uh, and I'm praying for his family. Um, I know they say it's a cardiac arrest situation. He's still in critical condition. Uh, and I, I pray that, you know, his vitals and everything is back to normal, but I pray that everything comes back and, you know, this guy can continue to live a lifelong, uh, successful life that he's had so far. I just want to remind everyone that Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We are the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, to receive your rewards. Bet Online, where the game starts. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny you, you you bring up the whole, you know, player mentality when it comes to that. Uh, we had a player that's quite famous for his quote. He's now with the Bills, but Naheem Hines, right, as a punt returner, had talked about, you know, going out there and every time he goes to field uh, a kickoff or a punt, you know, he, he, you know, he's like, I'm going out there with the thought that I could die on this play. And he's OK. You know, that's that's what he's going to do. He was out there, you know, when this happened as well. So um, I would love to get his two cents. But, you know, at this point, he's not a Colt. So <laughs> um, I, my prayers and thoughts to DeMar, his family, his friends, uh, Bill's fans, uh, his teammates, coaches, everyone uh, out there, 
um, I, I feel for for everybody. Uh, Rodney, uh, what 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 was going through your mind when when you saw what was going on out there? Yeah, uh, I think you know, like you just said, uh, you know, first and foremost, prayers go out to you know his family and friends and teammates and everyone who's connected to Jerron um, and and witness what we all did last night. And you know, I like Jerron. My wife and I were watching the game, and you know, this was this was uh, the game of the week, right? It's prime time, and and it, it has a lot of uh, playoff implications uh, involved. And so everyone's locked in and, and, and just like everybody else, um, I was I really thought after the hit that it, it probably was concussion related. Uh, but I began to get worried, as as Shira said, when they continue to have multiple commercial breaks, uh, it, it just felt different. Mm -hmm. And I think for for everyone, it, it, it brought uh, it was a reality check to this sport that we all love, uh, that, you know, Gerard's played uh, since he was little, my, myself included, um, and you as well, Lars, you, you've played the game. And the moment you hit the field, you try to remove any thought of an injury occurring, yep. right? That, that, is, that is the rule. It's, you know, you don't go out there thinking that this play will truly be your last. And not only that, you, you, you never think that it will put you in a condition where you're unable to to breathe. You're unable to uh, go home to your families, as, as Gerard said. And that's what we saw last night. You know, he literally collapsed and laid there breathless for uh, minutes, you know, over 10 minutes of, of time. And that just puts the game in perspective. Um, I know, you know, we're often as players, you know, seen as these these warriors and and, and gladiators and, and, and how we're so conditioned to overlook injuries. But injuries are real and mm -hmm. injuries not only have a short term effect, but they have long term effects. You know, you think about the concussions and uh, how serious, you know, over the, the recent years that the league has implemented these rules that we were just addressing to try to eliminate these unnecessary blows to the head um, and how the, 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 the condition of the helmets are in, are so much better for and equipped for these sorts of hits. And, you know, it's a violent sport, man. And we put our bodies on the line for this game that we love. And, um, you know, for, you know, Deron to uh, go through this at such a young age, man, it's, it's so sad to, to see. And, you know, we, we all make great sacrifices in life and, and, and for this sport, but we never wanted to come at, at the expense of, of our own life. And the young man right now is fighting for that. And I'm hoping that he, he makes a full recovery um, as soon as possible. And I know there's so many people just trying to get, get news. My wife, she's, she's, her passion is, is, is medical field and, and, and concussions and things of that nature. So she's educated me on what it could potentially be, what she thinks. And uh, we just sat there in prayer, uh, just like, you know, you guys said, uh, just hoping that, man, some some good news would, would uh, we would hear good news soon. Yeah. And, and uh, the one thing I was kind of appreciative about, normally NFL don't handle these type situations well, I was actually thankful that they did not continue this game. Um, I'm telling to you. See, to see the both sides, how it affected the players. Mm -hmm. And there's no way you can get yourself back ready mentally to play a game when you see a player land on the field breathless. You know, like you, you're seeing doctors and trainers that you know personally having to give CPR to a player. Like that's – a life changing moment situation for anybody. So for both of the head coaches to come together, cause I'm pretty sure it was both head coaches was on the same page about like, we cannot continue this game. I was happy that the, the NFL didn't, I guess, pick business over real life situations. Cause that's what we normally see from the NFL. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Like they, they, they chose us first. You yeah. know, for the for the, the for the first, first time, time, I would say <laughs> in a real you situation. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, and and that's what it's about. You you need to listen to your players. Uh and, and it was great to see both coaches, like you said, come together and really just gauge the temperature of their team. 
mm. and and listen to what their players had to say. And and, and like Gerard, you know, man, it, it, any other injury, the ones we're accustomed to seeing, you know, what I'm saying strains, you know, um, broken bones, ligament tail, broken yep. bones. They move the ball up 15 yards, and it's like you continue on with practice as if, yep, it it yep. never happened. And like last night, you can't do that. You can't you can't move the ball up you know, 20 yards and say, let's get to playing. You can't take a 30 minute break and get back to it because somebody's life is at risk. And, mm-hmm. and, and, and we don't know yeah. Yeah. Where, yeah. Where, he, where he stands in, in that moment. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you talk about, you know, the, the other plays, you know, it's something that, you know, you, you are prepared for as a player, you know, you know, that you could have a, a torn tendon or a broken bone or something of that nature. But when you have something of that life threatening happening on the field, there's, I, I, I'm going to assume, because I've never had it happen to me in front of me, but I'm going to assume that, you know, being out there, that's when things in your own mind start, but that could be me out there, you know, that, yeah. that could, you know, and at that point, like you said, you know, that that's going to change your mentality. It's going to hard. It'd be almost impossible to get your mind back in the right situation to even play the game. So the fact that the NFL uh, did go ahead and, and postpone the game, I think was a credit to them, you know, uh, finally, I mean, there was guys out there like Skip Bayless last night when that happened uh, when it happened, he was like, how can the NFL do this? And, and you know, I'm like, because this isn't like normal situations. You yeah, know, this is this isn't a normal situation at all. I have a question for both of you guys when it comes to uh big player injuries, you know, where guys, you know, have very serious injuries, and you know, the camera should the camera continue to stay on the player and and and, and like replay certain things, or or should they kind of you know kind of pull that camera off and and in uh, you know very intimate situations for players i've i've seen this discussion a little bit and uh, it's kind of back and forth for me because I, I i mean when when it's happening in real time you don't know the seriousness of it initially uh but as it goes on of course you don't want the camera to keep replaying what happened showing what happened but on the flip side of it, let's just say that young man's family is not at the game and they don't have any way to communicate or any way to kind of know the seriousness of it or what's going on. So in hindsight, it could help from the communication standpoint of what's going on for, for his family in specific. Now it's an ugly injury. It's an ugly situation. You don't want the cameras just to keep rolling the replays and just staying on exactly about what's going on right there. But I'm pretty sure that, um, his family and friends that was watching that might not have thought it was as serious initially, uh, maybe just a little bit appreciated the fact that they got to they got some type of information uh, of what was going on because of the cameras and some of the things that was said uh, as far as on the broadcast standpoint uh, about that current situation. So I'm kind of on both sides of it, but you don't want the replays and stuff like that to continue to show for sure. Rodney? Yeah, I, I think I, I agree uh, with Gerard. And I, I think last night they handled handled it very well. Uh, I, I think as, as they started to get word of the, of the seriousness of the injury, they respectfully started to zoom out, right, um, and kind of just do more of a, a, a widescreen. But what they did the best was, I, I think, providing everybody just with consistent updates because you do have that, that – that, uh, that family member uh, who is at home, who's waiting for some sort of response and, 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 mm-hmm. and really begging, yeah, please get the cameras back on them. But uh, I think at the end of the day, if, if you can just keep viewers um, uh, um, updated just with the information from as a broadcaster, that that is the best uh, thing to do in that in that moment right there. And so, I, I like I said, I, I respect what they did last night and being able to kind of give him that that privacy uh, and allow you know doctors to administrate the the practices that they need in that moment. Uh, you know, there, there's some things that you just don't want you know to to share, um, and, and I and I respect them for that. And and so, uh, yeah, you kind of you kind of play both sides of it, but 
I, I think they handled it the best way they could last night. Absolutely. Um, a lot of support has been shown for DeMar's uh, charity, his foundation, his toy drive. Uh, ever since this happened, the, the support has been absolutely unreal by friends, families, fans, you know, everybody out there. Uh, it's raised to this point over four and a half million dollars since the injury happened. Mm. Uh, that shows a lot of support and, 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 and caring about uh, what, what's actually going on. So uh, thank you everybody. Uh, because obviously, you know, you know, children are very important uh, and his foundation donating is one way to show, uh, you know, your thoughts and prayers are, are with them. Um, let's move on. Uh, talk about a couple couple games maybe uh, and and the implications that they've had uh, for for this past week I don't have a lot of time left for, for this episode but uh, I do want to get into boy them Jacksonville Jaguars look for real don't they oh, yeah. I mean <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah yeah they legit right now they legit man they just they just think, put a whooping on uh, I think the Texans. Texans. Yeah, I think the experience just kicking in, man. Uh, the the more reps and games these young guys play, the more confidence it seemed to, you know, uh, give the team as a whole. I mean, they got young guys all over their roster and uh, young young upcoming superstars as well. And whenever you get the right head coach, right coaching staff, and you got stability in the front office and everybody's on the same page, I mean, it just shows you what that can do uh, for a team going forward. And, you know, what they went through with Urban Meyer and that group, I mean, it's completely night and day on how uh, the league is respecting the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. Yeah, Dougie P, man. That, that's, that's your guy. That's my, that's your that's guy. my guy. <laughs> you know, he's he's changing the culture uh, there, and that's what you want to see. He's, he's giving direction. And I remember seeing a, a few guys talk about him. Uh, they, they put a – I think a, a few quotes up from uh, from some players, and I think one thing that uh, I witnessed throughout my time there because it never it wasn't easy. It wasn't all you know. What I'm saying Super Bowl uh, champion confetti at, at every every single week um, in the five years that I played with him. We we had dark times. We had four and seven starts, and we had to fight our way through. But one thing that Doug always did was he made sure that we were unified that we were consistently together, that the messaging always was consistent and that we never wavered. And when you can, you always revert back to that. It's like, trust the process. And he really ingrained that in us. And so I think he's doing, he's doing that right there in Jacksonville. You know, you've seen them come back and it looks as if their, their season is done and they just keep pushing and keep fighting and, and knowing like they're, they're on that breaking point of, of really turning the corner. And so they've done that, and now they put themselves in position to win the division when everybody thought that even with all the guys that they brought in, you know, they were going to be the same Jacksonville Jaguars. But uh, they said otherwise, and and they really believe in themselves and, and have the utmost confidence in their team and knowing that they were going to take on the, the defending champions at home in Jacksonville – uh, to send them into the playoffs, what better stage, man? And on prime time Saturday game, I'm I'm excited to to check it out, and uh, I'm mad that I that I'm not a part of it, right? That I'm we're not in the discussion, you know. what I'm saying for this division, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, interesting uh, to see how it all plays out. Absolutely, uh, really, especially with the the like you said, the difference in the directions the teams are going right now. The Titans are just on a free pole, very much similar to the Indianapolis Colts. And Jacksonville has won a, a lot of games as of late and in convincing fashion at that. Mm -hmm. um, another another uh, team, I could just real quick, um, if the Lions make the playoffs, can they make noise? Could they just beat the Bears? I mean, Beat Any, the Bears. Oh, anybody oh. that get in the dance can make noise. It's all about yeah. momentum. I mean, I remember Eli Manning and the Giants had to win the last, like, five, six games of the season 
uh, to get in the playoffs. And when they got in the playoffs, they end up being a Super Bowl champion. So once you get in, all records and what you've done previously that in the season, it don't matter anymore. Now you got to play your best on Sunday. You can't have any hiccups. You can't play subpar. It's whoever is the best that upcoming Sunday. So uh, if, if Detroit gets in, um, that, I think they're, they, they have the potential to cause some noise. I mean, you got a team that's been hungry for respect. You know, not necessarily just to get in the playoffs. They've been hungry just to have respect around the league. Uh, so if that momentum, they get in the playoffs and that momentum keep riding, man, uh, like I said, anybody that's in the dance can cause damage to anybody. Yeah, I'm going to steal a Philly quote, man. Hungry dogs run faster. You mm. know, and, they, and, they, and, and they're right now, they, they're hungry for, for mm. it all, for a win. And uh, it's exciting to see, you know, how this – 17th game has really just stirred men. things up around mm -hmm. the league consistently over the past couple of seasons. And, you know, now they have to go to green Bay. You know, if you, if you, if you, if you really want it, then, you know, you go have yeah. to, you go have to go get it versus one of the and best to do it. I was about but, to say, and, and they're hot and green Bay's hot, yeah. you know, and they, yeah, have, they just, they just <laughs> smoke the Vikings, you know, so yeah. you, you look at green Bay about five, six weeks ago, you know, we wrote them off. I mean, at one point we were saying that Aaron Rodgers need to go, you know, he's yeah, not quarterback playing change, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and all that type of stuff. And now you look at them, it's just like, man, they figured it out at the right time. And you know, that's what we said a, a weeks ago. You know, you don't want to be playing your best football at the beginning of the year or middle at the year, middle of the year. You want to be playing your best football in December and January going into the playoffs. Yeah, but still making sure you give yourself, like, obviously, you know, a, a chance and staying afloat. But it's been impressive to watch. Yeah, both Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady battle back. You know, both the the, the OGs getting it done, man. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Tampa's clinch. But uh, Aaron Rodgers still has has one more before he can um, – before he can uh, grant himself a ticket into the dance. But it is a new season once that playoff start. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you did. And Gerard uh, alluded to it, but you know I'll go back to Tom Brady and, and the Buccaneers when they won. Uh, uh, I they, think they yep. they went off on a on a on a winning streak, and they end up winning eight in a row. If you you know if you yeah. talk about the regular season into into playoffs, and had to do it in the playoffs all on the road. Yep. So yep. it's tough to do. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Um, all right, I think that's probably going to do it for this week, talking about stuff that's going on in the NFL. Uh, for myself, Gerard Powers, Rodney McLeod, thank you guys uh, for watching Believe in Colts, brought to you by Bet Online. And until next time, have a good one. Do you believe?